If 1v1 didn't clip it, then it ain't clipped right. Everybody together. We got some guys from out of town that are still playing pro, but for the most part, we got everybody there. We had eight guys on Wednesday out of the, 11, out of the 10, so doing the best we can. Without giving away too many secrets, who who looked the best in practice now, all, today? All team was good. We all are good. Uh, there's no, there's not anybody really standing out because um, we're not even going to play like that. So if anybody ends up doing, you know, scoring more, it's going to be because somebody else is playing defense or somebody else is passing really well or setting good screen. That's all. That's how we're going to work. So we got a lot of people in the comments saying, OMG, it's the number one NBA ref. You know, no one travel around, around Devin. You bring the whistle out at all during practice and call some extra travels, or you let the guys play? No, that's not me. That's the other guy with the glasses. So that's you got the wrong guy. You know, if you see the, the name is Splint. I'm there, so it's two different, two totally different guys. So let's talk some TVT here for a second. And talk some in the lab. Obviously, Yo. you Yo. guys are making your debut. What made you want to be a part of TVT? Um, well, we just like winning, so. We just want to go play uh, different places. Uh, we went to uh, went to play in New York a few times. We went to uh, we won a Venice Beach League. Um, we tasted defeat, and we've won uh, a bunch of stuff. So we just want to play at the high, highest level. We went, even went to play in Atlanta about a month ago, and uh, lost the first game. So you know, against some guys that we match up against them five times, we would have beat them four. So. Uh, I, I like it because it can go either way. I like the single game elimination. Uh, we we got our full squad now, so I'm, I'm excited to see how everything comes together. And then we looked up that we're playing against a, a team who won two games last year and made it to that third game. They end up losing, but I'm excited to play against that team. So that's what, what I'm you, about. What do you think about where you're playing in Lubbock? What do you expect in the atmosphere to be like there? We prefer playing like in a in a hostile environment. Like not exactly just getting comfortable. I think it's like three or four Texas teams. Um, if you count the HBCU, right? I think Texas, Texas State, or Texas Tech, uh, HBCU got some guys from Texas, and it's one other thing. But it's like North Texas. We yeah, North Texas. We prefer playing in a, in an environment like that because it's better to. I don't know. I'd rather I'd rather play in somebody. Else's house and beat them at their own game. You know what I mean? Like, there's something about that letting everybody leave the gym mad. So that's kind of where we're at with it. We we enjoy those hostile environments. Absolutely. So obviously, it's easy to talk about you wanted to be involved, and then it's easy to jump to here's your roster, here's who's playing. But I want to hear about what the journey's been like from you know your decision to try and enter a team in to now. What's what's that been like? This isn't a playing it uh like i said it's it's been a tournament we've had a bunch of guys playing it out the gym that we're working at at uh one of the more popular guys is Pooh jetter who just retired but he almost made it he almost made it to the championship he's playing with joe johnson and we saw uh they got upset but at the same time like you know now it's time for us to get like a full squad of guys out the gym uh it's been like most of the guys are training, they're at our runs. Um, we're hooping together, so we got chemistry. And then we got, uh, you know, some guys that are from out of town. We got a uh, NBA guy that uh, is in JD Miller, uh, professional. Um, we got Curtis Hollins. We got, you know, we got a bunch of G leaguer, G leaguer type players, and obviously Devontae Frigger, who's a very popular, super popular type of guy. So. To get them to play, it was kind of easy because, hey, you're playing on TV, you get a chance to play for a million dollars. Everybody wants money. So um, it was cool. It was cool. We got we got a lot of guys that, that have been helping us out too, like in terms of scrimmages and everything. A lot of guys that beat up on us. Uh, a lot of guys that we beat up on, some NBA guys came through to help us get ready. So um, it's, it's been cool, like developing the chemistry. Uh, but, yeah, it's just – collectively, it's just been a bunch of guys from all over – all over that comes to our gym, and then we can hoping to go. You mentioned Friga. What do you think of him dropping a hundred points in that in that rec league game a few weeks ago in the P League? Yeah, Friga can score. He's super aggressive. 
Like a lot of people don't really understand how aggressive he is. He'd be out there playing super hard on defense. He don't care if he's fouling you. He don't care if you think he's too aggressive. Um, but he can hoop though. Like, a lot of people don't realize he's gotten a lot better too. Like we, it started off with us playing like this one on one for a hundred thousand dollars, and uh, I ended up winning that game. But I wouldn't beat this friggin' the way that I did last time. It'd be I'd have to be a lot more locked in to to beat this one. He, he's he's really good and it's kind of fun watching how much better he got over the years actually. So you're you're taking the role on of head coach. Yeah. Uh, what 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 kind of head coach experience do you have? What what style of coaching are are you bringing into TBT and in the lab? Um so I've been doing like film for pro teams for a long time. And so this technically would be in this type of setting my first opportunity at a head coaching job. Um, other than doing it at Venice Beach or co helping with uh, some girls basketball or co some college teams. But this is technically the biggest type of stage that we've been on where I'm the head coach. And the reason why I actually did the head coach uh, thing because we went to Atlanta. And it takes me too long to get going. Uh, once I'm going, I'm, I'm killing, but it takes me too long to get going. And then I was in a coaching hat. I was wearing a coaching hat trying to play. We had the Bitcoin Classic. So it was like too much back and forth. And I'd rather just focus on one. Um, me being 35 now, it's just like I'd rather give other guys opportunity anyways um, because my playing days are really over. Just to be honest, they're, they're over. I have fun playing, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm stepping back and like really trying to – I like behind the scenes anyways developing plays, base plays, just that type of stuff and the other. So that's where I'm at right now, and I'm enjoying it. That's great to hear. Looking, looking forward to seeing in the lab, you know, out there against HBC United. Looking forward to seeing you coaching. I want to ask you, though, about the silent basketball, because mm -hmm. I see it all over Instagram, all over Twitter. Personally, I, I don't believe that it's silent. How would you guys do that? It's not totally sorry. You just it just sounds a lot. The sound is a lot more down than a regular basketball. So uh, we actually stopped producing it to make a version two because there's a lot of improvements that I want to make on the ball. Um, possibly get it more silent, more durable, all those different type of things because the idea is there and a lot of people are supporting it. But it's how I learned how to dribble. I was dribbling in the house, and that's how I learned how to dribble just from my mom allowing me to do something like that if more people were able to do this that'd be pretty sick you know we've seen handles all over the world so um but yeah i mean i appreciate i appreciate the shout out but even moving back to uh the tbt is something that i want to give a shout out to somebody uh blake hamilton who won on the uh buffalo team i forgot the name of their squad but um he plays at our gym uh he plays at our gym a lot so it was cool having somebody out the gym win win a million dollars so he's been out there and, and he gives he gives all the advice in the world like you guys should be doing this have a training camp should be focused on this this is how we won it and i'm like that's dope like for a person we could potentially match up is like helping us all like that that's cool yeah so that's the blue collar you guys the buffalo alumni blake hamilton he, he's the man there was a a viral video of him last year when he won his share of a million dollars and he looked at his phone and he saw it actually in the bank yeah. that was that was an all-time moment have you guys talked at all about what it would be like to win the million dollars or are you too focused on the first game no we got to focus on hbcu <laughs> we got we got to beat them for we got we can worry about a million dollars later like when actually i won the whole thing but there's a lot of good teams there's a lot of good teams that i have to like sit down and actually go over film and and it's hard because some guys it's harder to find film on them because they didn't plan it the year before or whatever the situation is. So, but that's part of my job, right? To sit down and and really scout these these players. And it's fun for me trying to develop weaknesses for players and like see their strengths because everybody planning it knows how to play basketball, right? So, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun doing all this stuff. Wait, hold on. I'm having a hard. Do you got your finger over the? Uh... Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Probably. I must have had it over the yeah, mic. So, okay. so, you mentioned you mentioned that you got some guys on the team that have played before. You got Blake in your ear, kind of helping you. But I'm curious, you know, as a first year entrant, what are you still wondering about? What do you still have questions about? You know, as we're just less than a week away. 
you don't really know till you actually get out there, right? Like you gotta actually play. That's why we play the game to then figure things out. But I, I'm interested in seeing what's gonna happen when the other team has maybe has their crowd there, how we're gonna deal with that. Because I know that they play super aggressive over there. So how are we going to deal with that? We've been trying to get guys to prepare. Like, I'll, I'll bring some guys into the gym to the scrimmage, and I'll tell them, like, yeah, just talk hella trash. to them be super physical because TBT, they kind of – the rest let them play, so, which is great, right? You don't want to go play for a million dollars and get fouled out. But at the same time, you don't want nobody getting hurt. So you got to call something, but, you know, so so – we, we that's the main thing is just how are we gonna deal with it when it's time to actually play for the money? If I'm if I'm not mistaken, this is the first year that we get to play in front of uh, uh NBA scouts, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like, what'll happen when you got all this stuff going on? Can we stay within the team? Can we stay composed and do what we got to do? That's gonna be the biggest uh, thing to see if we can uh, stay on track. Yeah, that's a great point. That's a brand new element with the NBA scouts aspect. The Elam ending, the way all the games end, that's sometimes difficult for guys to adjust to for the first time. As a coach, are you prepped? Are you are you ready for the Elam ending? So this is funny. So like I said, we went to uh, this this tournament in Atlanta, and we had the Elam ending, right? So we got off to a, a slow start. I got in. And we got, we really got going. We started winning the game. We get to the fourth quarter. We're winning the game, right? We're up like eight, whatever, maybe seven. And we get to the Elam ending. Like they stopped the game. They put 20 minutes on the clock. And we're like, whatever. I thought somebody called a timeout. I kind of forgot about it. So long story short, we had a way that we were winning. We were playing fast. We were winning. We started winning the game. And then once it started, we fouled free throws. We're in the bonus. Like, they got a free throw and a ball. Then they hit a three. Just like that. Bang, bang. They come back, hit another three. And we hit a three. So, it's like going back and forth now because they caught up. So, I'm saying that to say is, what well, for me, it's not going away from how you actually play. Because now we got reps of actually playing that way and playing the actual Elam ending. And we found out through trial and error that when you play how you do, and don't change much, you can actually still win. And that means not taking the hero's three-pointer from half court. Like, if you got an easy bucket, go take it. Trust in your stops, um, this, that, and the other. And we've been doing a good job of staying locked in with that because it's different. But what it does allow is those, uh, you know, those heartfelt moments where you, where you get a buzzer beater, you know what I mean? It's cool. Like, I've been watching it every year to see that every game is going to end like that is pretty dope. So we're prepared for it now. We've been doing situations when we're down four or down six, um, and we got to come back, and, we, you know, we've been doing a good job of it. Well, it's super exciting. It makes the game, you know, kind of crazy. We got some guys that could really – if you leave them open, they're going to make the shot. That's just what it is. And frigate, if you leave them open, he's going to make it. Um, and so I'm happy to have really everybody. But like I said, we're having guys like Cam Young, Seth Henry, uh, J.D. Miller, P. Sean Howard, and just all the guys, right? Uh, we're all built for it. We work on every shot that you're going to see us shoot, we work on. That's some actual hoopers, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, so – I, I run the TBT podcast, Inside TBT. I'm in the middle of filling out my bracket. Last question for you. Why, why should I pick in the lab to not just win the first round but go far in, in the bracket? I hope that you don't – I hope nobody picks it. <laughs> I, I hope nobody – so just so we can just keep sneaking up on everybody. That, that's just the way I look at it. I mean, um, I hope nobody's counting for us. Uh, I hope we can just sneak up and win a million dollars because – you know, you look at that at that uh, blue collar squad. How many NBA guys did they have? You know what I mean? Like they just went out there and just played hard. And I, I know if we would have started it, you know, on the first day that that tournament started, I know a lot of people probably didn't think that they were gonna win it. That the blue collar squad was gonna win it. So, uh, but if you had to bet, and you know, if I was trying to sell you on it, we got a bunch of guys that um, we got a lot of guys that can score. And which isn't always a good thing, but for the most part, they're they're very very unselfish. So that's a good thing about it. When you got a bunch of guys that, that don't care who gets twenty, um, it actually ends up working out in there.
Well, Dev, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. I'm going to pull it up right now. You guys have the, looks like the 3 p.m. game in Lubbock on the 19th. Good luck to you guys against HBC United, and hopefully we see you in the second round and on. Absolutely. Uh, so we have three games. Anyways, I'm not even going to ask. I'm just going to focus on this first one. Appreciate it. Thanks, man.